and she sneaks up behind Professor X and snaps his neck. Oh my god! Within her mind, so then you see Professor X just like, <laughs> dang, dude, it's it's sick. <coughs> You're sick right now. <laughs> This is the 99 Nerds Podcast, episode four. I am Austin. And I am David. David is back in town from the Nashville. Back again. How many Nashes did you bring home? All the Vills. Seven? Twelve of them. <laughs> I hope I get at least three of those twelve. We are here today. We don't have a ton of Star Wars content today. Shocker. I know most of you are disappointed, but this is going to be pretty fun because we are going to dive into the Doctor Strange movie. Uh, David has seen it. We talked a little bit about it last week with Sean Tacular, but we're going to dive into it a little further. There's a lot more to talk about. We're also going to talk about the Moon Knight series. Uh, I have not seen Doctor Strange, though, so David, I'm going to let you take it from here. All right. Um, so I saw Doctor Strange. I want to start by saying I had really high hopes for this movie. I was really, really excited for some of the theories I came up in my own head that I thought without a doubt they were going to do. Um, things didn't trap. go that way. That's the trap. That is the trap. My own creative mind set me up for failure. I thought it was a good movie. I was a little disappointed, though. Halfway through the movie, I looked at Emily and said, this movie is freaking awesome. Like, this is so cool. I can't wait to see where this goes. And then it didn't go where I thought it was. Mm. And I kind of thought, that sucks. <laughs> so that does sound. i really liked the movie up until i didn't <laughs> well that'll, yeah i'd Wait. give it a seven out of ten okay um i'm not a big fan about dr strange mm -hmm. he's not one of my favorites but uh, did you see the first one i did it was so long ago though yeah that you know certain elements i forgot about yeah. but. sean was kind of saying in the last episode you should probably see the first one before you go and see this movie and wandavision you, you definitely WandaVision. want to see that okay so let's dive into it. This will be our time where we say, if you don't want deep spoilers of this movie, you should probably not watch this at all because we're going to dive deep into it. The movie's been out long enough where we feel like we can go into this without much repercussion. But if you haven't seen it yet, you know, you can, you could probably skip to uh, halfway through this episode uh, once we start talking about Moon Knight. Right. But if you don't want any spoilers on Moon Knight, you should probably just go home right now because <laughs> we're going to dive. Get your snorkeling gear. In the go. night we go. <laughs> night mode. It's about to get weird. <laughs> Strange, in fact. Strange? Go ahead. Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, um, I'm just going to go ahead and say if you watch the trailer and then you listen to this podcast, the trailer being Doctor Strange trailer, mm -hmm. and then listen to this podcast, you will have seen the movie. The trailer, I think, ruins the whole movie. Oh my. Literally every element in the trailer is like every peak point in the movie. Mm -hmm. There's a scene where you've got Captain Carter, you see a British shield, and you're like, right. oh shoot. That's an oh shoot in the movie yeah. that gets ruined from the trailer. And that's a reference to the What If series. That, yeah. So that's another thing. If you if you haven't seen the What Ifs if you haven't seen WandaVision or The First Strange, you should probably go watch all those things. Yeah, I think the What If series is really cool. Mm -hmm. Dude, there's an episode about Captain Carter. Captain America in this episode uh, dies, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this is strong accusation is for it? someone who hasn't really <laughs> seen it. No, I'm pretty sure it's Captain America dies and Captain Carter takes the serum herself um, before the Hydra spies can get it. So yeah, that's kind of what gets, the episode is about. He gets shot, right. So Captain Carter, Peggy, his girl, um, becomes Captain Carter with the, the super soldier serum. Mm -hmm. So anyway, in Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, I had the expectation that, you know, coming from Spider-Man No Way Home, we've got this really cool concept of, like, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield showed up. Like, what's next? Right. What type of multiverse crazy stuff is Marvel going to do? Right. What other characters are they going to bring into the fold? You know, you've got, at the end of No Way Home, you've got, in the end credits, Venom mm -hmm. goes into a different multiverse. Tom Hardy's Venom, yep. Um, so you have these, like, concepts being created in these movies. 
-hmm. So going into the multiverse of madness, Doctor Strange movie, I thought, what are we going to get? Right. My In my head, I'm like, Professor X shows up in the trailer. Yeah. X-Men are showing up. Mm -hmm. They're going to bridge the gap. Yeah. Between the X-Men movies and this movie. This is how they draw it in. This is how they do it. Without a doubt, the X-Men are showing up. Right. They didn't. Mm. And that's what I was waiting for. And I don't think that's too far-fetched to want that. Right. Especially when they tease Professor X in the trailer. Right. But, and I'll get into this in a little bit, um, I think Marvel, they do a good job with a story, like a long-term story. I think yeah. they still have a plan. Sure. But I thought this was like the plan. Like Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, that should be where we get the bridge, the madness of the multiverse. Right. Show me everything. Right. Um, so the movie starts off with America Chavez. She is a, she's got these powers. She can jump from multiverse to multiverse. That's her power. Mm -hmm. She can go to any universe. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily on command. She, it kind of activates when she gets scared. She doesn't really know how to tap into it. Ooh. So when she gets scared, that's when the, the bridge opens up. And I'm just going to go ahead and say, I don't like her. <laughs> and, and here's why. If you've ever seen Disney Channel, you know, in the beginning when they're like, and you're watching Disney Channel mm -hmm. and they draw the thing Thanks. and it's like, boop, like this chick <laughs> reminded me of like straight up Hannah Montana. Like Hannah's you're Hannah's. watching the Disney Channel because every time she opens a portal to another universe, it's in like a blue star shape. And it's so like. You get Childish. the best of both worlds. <laughs> it's so like cringe. Oh, Multi worlds. And why is her name America? That's weird. <laughs> In the very beginning, she introduces herself and she says, I'm Erica. That's what I heard. She said America, but I heard Erica. The whole time I thought she was Erica. <laughs> so. She shows up with Doctor Strange, a different Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. A different and, universe is Doctor Strange? Yeah. So they're they're trying to get the Book of Shanti, or not Shanti, a book. Book of Shanti. It was Shanti. Shanti. No, they're trying to get this book called the Vashanti. And basically this book can undo any dark spell from the Darkhold. Mm -hmm. um, and that the Darkhold is kind of what this movie is all about. It's this book of evil, dark magic so that's what we see at the end of wandavision right there's an end credit scene of wandavision where wanda has acquired this book and she's just going dark with it like mm -hmm. you can tell like wanda is going down a path uh what's her name in the show uh agatha agatha warns her like you don't know what you're doing with that and she just dives right into it at the end credit scenes of that show so mm -hmm. this is like the consequences you see of her diving into that dark book right dr strange shows up at where Wanda's staying because he's looking for some help and basically right before this Doctor Strange helps America escape this monster that's chasing her through the streets. <coughs> Doctor Strange and Wong take down this monster they save America Erica, Hannah Montana, whatever you want to call her Hannah Tanner, Hannah Tanner. Um, they talk to America and she says that every Doctor Strange she's met so far has been wanting her power and almost wanting to like kill her and take over her power mm. so she doesn't trust dr strange like siler from heroes yo that's a side note that's one of my all-time favorite shows that's a sick show if you siler. haven't seen that but heroes is goat anyway we'll get back into that in episode 72 but yeah that's anyway we'll <laughs> um so basically she tells dr strange like i don't really trust you in every other universe you try to kill me and take my power makes sense and he's like okay well i just saved you from that monster so mm -hmm. you can trust me she shows him the dead body of the other dr strange that she traveled with mm. after showing dr strange the dead body dr strange is like oh well i'll just bury it on this rooftop and the whole time you're like, okay, you know this guy's coming back in the movie. Like, it was so awkward. It was just, like, so weird and, like, yeah. all right, we're going to bury my dead body on this rooftop because we don't know what to do with it. It's like, all right. How did he die? The monster that was chasing him in the very beginning kills him. Oh, okay. And basically he's, like, trying to take America's power mm -hmm. so he can leave. And America gets scared. And while she's getting scared, she opens the portal. 
And then the portal opens up into Strange's world, right. the world we know. But while that's happening, the Doctor Strange from that world dies. Gotcha. And then his body and her go into Doctor Strange's world. Gotcha. So Doctor Strange is like, all right, well, there's a dead version of me. That's wild. I'm going to bury it on this roof. The dude had plans the whole time. He's like, I'm going to do something to that body. <laughs> he's like, So it's like a very sinister, like, you're, they're foreshadowing this is going to. It's, yeah. Okay. It wasn't subtle. You knew it was going to happen. <laughs> like, something was coming. Sure. I, I looked at Emily, and I was like, this guy's coming back. Well, sometimes he's they, coming back. There's sometimes no they need to set up the audience to make it, like, remember this, folks. Right. Remember he's on the roof. So, anyway, this monster showed up in uh, the city mm. chasing America. We went through that. Um, but it was very, like, gruesome, the way they killed it. They, like, threw a staff through its eye, and its eyeball falls, and, like, it's, yeah. like... It's a dark movie. They said from the beginning when they announced this movie that it was going to be more like a horror movie than anything else. Yeah. And they were even like teetering like, do we make this R-rated? Especially after like Logan and Deadpool have had super success as R-rated movies. They threw out the idea of do we make this a horror movie straight up R-rated and just go deep? But they didn't. So I really thought this was like the one of the darkest Marvel movies I've seen. Mm -hmm. Minus Deadpool and Logan. Right. Um. Hold on. Mm. Tell me about it. Okay. Tell your story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, they defeat this monster in a gruesome way. And they're like, what the heck is, why is this monster chasing you? Mm -hmm. Where did this come from? So Dr. Strange goes to visit Wanda to ask her, you know, get her help type of thing. He shows up and Wanda's, you know, playing in her flower fields and he's talking to her and he's like, you know, there's this monster that was going after this girl, whatever. He asks Wanda if she would come and help them. And she says, well, why don't you just bring America here? And I looked at Emily and I was like, what? Why would they bring the nation <laughs> to this flower field? Can Dr. Strange do I, that? I thought her name was Erica. It wasn't. <laughs> it's America. Strange, can you bring the entire nation to this field? <laughs> what? <laughs> Let my people go. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway. That's a random bit. Prince of Egypt. Prince of Egypt. Moon Knight. <laughs> here we go. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Back to Strange. Back to Strange. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, Wanda's like, why don't you just bring America here? And Strange stops. And she's like, oh, you never told me her name, did you? And you're like, wait, what? I missed that, that wait, what? Because I thought she was talking about the nation of America still. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know what was happening. What but, the heck is she talking about? But then uh, all of a sudden the flower fields, like this facade goes away. And the flower fields are not a flower field. It's just a field of dead trees. And like, oh. it's dark and... Her crown appears, and you know, like, oh, this chick's bad. Right. So he doesn't even have, like, any interaction with good Wanda. It's just, like, right off the bat, boom. Wanda's it's a facade. You think Wanda's good. And mm. then when she blows her cover by saying, like, America. why don't you bring America here? And he's like, whoa, I never told you that. Then all of a sudden, her darkness comes out, and he's like, yo, you stay away. Mm. And she's like, I've been nice. I've been trying to get what I want the right way. She's like, don't make me do what I need to do to take mm. over. And, and he's like, I will do what I must. <laughs> Obi-Wan. Um, <laughs> but no, so she turns evil and she's like, I've been nice. So what she's saying is she's the one sending the monsters after America. Oh. But she's saying, I will take matters in my own hands. Right. So Dr. Strange is like, bring it. So Dr. Strange goes back to the temple with Wong and they prep their little soldiers and they're like, yo, she's coming. So this giant red fart cloud emerges. Nice. <laughs> into the temple. She's been eating beans. <laughs> Pinto. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> side note, don't get black and Pinto beans in your Chipotle bowl. Yikes. That was a rough night. Did you have hot salsa, too? Yeah. Triple threat. <laughs> a lot of gas. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Gassed up on a So Sunday. Wanda shows up at the temple because that's where America's at. Mm -hmm. um, and all these soldiers, not soldiers, but magicians, I call them. Sorcerers. Sorcerers, yeah. They're all training and, you know, Wong's teaching or telling them to create a shield mm -hmm. around uh, the temple so she can't come in. Yeah. And Strange meets Wanda at the shield and basically says, like, bring it and she's like all right 
So she's trying to get in, but she can't because of the shield. Mm -hmm. So what she does is she tries, she starts focusing on certain sorcerers mm -hmm. and tries to take over their mind. So she's trying to get into the minds of all these sorcerers. And then it shows a scared little boy who you can tell has a history of loneliness. You know he just wants this girl. This pretty girl shows up at his door and all he's tasked to do is protect this village, this temple, all these sorcerers. And in one weak moment, Wanda enters his head, says, hello, Ron. And Ron caves and the shield falls and Wanda takes over. Now, here's the thing. A lot of my friends think they're Captain America. They think they're Thor. They think they relate to these superheroes who save the world. I'm here to tell you, most of you are Ron. You are not Cap. You are not Thor. In one moment, Elizabeth Olsen shows up. You're going to forget everything you've ever cared about, everything you've ever stood for, and you're going to let the temple collapse. Okay? You are not Cap. You are Ron. I got to stop you, David, because the man behind the mirror, Sean Tacular, he just texted me, is that guy's name actually Ron? Yeah, she gets behind him and she says, "Ron." Sean, does he? Does she say Ron? She says, "Run." <laughs> <laughs> his name isn't even Ron. His name is Ron. I'm gonna find the actor, and I swear to God, if his name is Ron in real life, <laughs> that's gonna be amazing. Well, all right, <laughs> Ron. We're gonna call him Ron. Fair enough. <laughs> anyway. So she takes over, she's destroying people in this temple left and right, like going ape, like destroying all these different people. And Doctor Strange and Wong are pretty much the few that survive um, with America. And they're held up in this deep part of the temple. And Wanda is trying to get in. And it's honestly set up like a horror movie where they're like waiting for the monster to break through. Basically what happens is Wanda walks in, she trashes Strange, she trashes Wong, and then she goes to America, and then America's powers tap in. And she gets scared. She gets scared. She goes to, like, hurt America, and Doctor Strange, like, steps in the way. And while he's doing that, the portals open up, and then America and Strange start falling through different multiverses. Mm. You don't see too much. It's very quick. It's like boom, 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 boom. So there's not much like, oh, in that universe, you see that. It's just kind of like because that a was scenery. The, that was the big hype with this movie. Is like, are they? Are we gonna see Miles Morales animated series? So write that down. I'm getting to that. Um, he doesn't have even, no pen. He doesn't even have a pen. <laughs> um, hey Siri. <laughs> no, so they're going through all these universes, and you know, there's one that's like a total green planet futuristic planet i don't know it's a lot Did of random see a mushroom planet no dang it um I was hoping for a sonic crossover <laughs> i have nothing to say That's um, <laughs> you don't have to <laughs> so they're falling through all these universes um you see an animated one just for a brief second mm -hmm. um and then they end up in earth 838 that's what it's called. Okay. Um, the, the Earth we know is 616. Okay. So they're in Earth 838, and basically they go to the Sorcerer Supreme, because that's where Doctor Strange knows where to go. Mm -hmm. And it's the dude with the dreads. and His buddy from, a, uh, from Strange 1. Yes. Yeah. Basically, he doesn't trust this guy, mm -hmm. because there's like a falling out between them. Right. But the guy shows up and gives him a big hug, and he's like, oh, like... That's weird. It must right. be the opposite. Because when they showed up, um, he goes to walk across the street when the lights are green or when the lights are red, and cars start coming and almost hit him. And America explains to him in this world things work differently. Mm. It's the opposite. Interesting. Um, which is big. I want you to remember that too. The lights turn green, and that's when he's supposed to walk. Mm -hmm. So they like set up this idea of like this universe is like an opposite. Okay. Which. I didn't think about it now, but plays into something later on. Um, means. But yeah, so he sees his buddy with the dreads and he's like, me and my buddy had a falling out, but this is an opposite world. Mm -hmm. So the guy walks up, gives him a hug and he's like, oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I can trust this guy. So they sit down for some tea. I don't know if it's tea, but we'll say tea. Drugs. So yeah, he drugs them 
and total guess. <laughs> it was a good guess. And uh, America passes out, and Doctor Strange starts getting all loopy, and the guy's like, "Dude, I know you're from another world, and I don't trust you." So, mm. so they wake up in a cage. Basically, they're in this cage. Like, yo, you need to let us out. We're good. I'm just trying to figure out how to get the Vashanti so I can stop this witch in my world Mm -hmm. um, because she's going to go ape mode and she's going to go ham and she's going to tap into some dark stuff and we got to stop her. So basically the dude with the dread shows up and he says, "Uh, strange, the Illuminati will see you now. And this is when I looked at Emily and I was like, like, here we go. This movie is about to be so sweet. This is peak. This is it right here. Right. So, uh, Strange is brought before the Illuminati, and you get introduced to Black Bolt, who doesn't talk. His mm-hmm. superpower is his voice. When he talks, his voice has these sound waves that literally tear atoms apart. Of mm-hmm. like, he could tear someone apart just by talking. Right. Um, so he doesn't talk. Um, and then you've got Captain Carter, which we talked about from the What If, mm-hmm. where she becomes Captain America. So yeah, Captain Carter is alive and well in this world. Um, and then you've got Captain Marvel, who is played by some African American chick. Is it the friend? It's the friend in um, Captain Marvel. I was wondering that, but I wasn't sure. I haven't seen Captain Marvel in a while, so I probably wouldn't have even caught that. But then you get introduced to Mr. Fantastic. Who plays him? None other than John Krasinski. Perfect. I'm so glad they did that. If you don't know, On Instagram for the last seven years, whenever they talk about Fantastic Four and let's do a new one, let's make a new Fantastic Four, everybody fan casts John Krasinski to be uh, uh, Mr. Fantastic. There's probably a bajillion photoshopped images on Instagram and all over the internet where people are like, if you make another Fantastic Four, John Krasinski has to be Mr. Fantastic. So that's baller that they actually did that. Because there's been a few characters within the Disney verse that have been fan cast like Rosario Dawson was fan cast as Ahsoka uh, because Boss Logic, who does a ton of sweet edits and a lot of Marvel and DC stuff, he put her in Ahsoka, like dressed up as Ahsoka. And ever since then, they were like, yeah, let's use her. So that's sweet that they use John Krasinski. Yeah. And Fantastic Four is considered literally the worst superhero movie ever made. <laughs> so they keep the fans demand like a new revamp. A better one. Because they're John great. Krasinski. Yeah, they're a great group. It's just they botched that last right. rerun. And Mr. Fantastic's character, you might know him from the old movies as the stretchy boy, but he's more than just a Mr. Mrs. Incredible. He is the smartest man in the world. Mm-hmm. Like, that's his thing. He is a scientist. He's the smartest man in the world. Right. Um, that being said, Professor X rolls in, and it's played by none other than Patrick Stewart, and he looks old that boy is old (laughs) that dude's been playing this role for a while at least six years a lot more than that (laughs) so it's cool i i really like this i was so hype i was at the edge of my seat like let's freaking go like this is so cool so dr strange walks in with his douchebag self and starts (laughs) saying comments they're like man this guy's just as arrogant or if not more arrogant than our dr strange and they go into what happened to theirs Mm mm-hmm and basically, their Doctor Strange tapped into the dark hold, and he became so corrupted um, because he was dreamwalking. So dreamwalking is a dark spell, dark magic from the dark hold. And basically, what it allows you to do is where, like, America can travel from universe to universe. Mm-hmm. That's her power. The dark hold allows you to go universe to universe but not as your physical self. Mm -hmm. It's more of like you take over the mind of something else, someone else. Um, So he was dreamwalking to help defeat Thanos in their world. Oh. Um, But it corrupted him to a point where he presented that he had been using the Darkhold to the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. And basically the Illuminati decided, okay, you need to die. Wow. So they actually killed him. Shoot. Um. So it was actually Black Bolt who just yoinked him. Yeah. Doctor Strange sat there on his knees and Black Bolt just yelled at him until he died. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, so <laughs> did they do like a flashback or did they just yeah. talk? Oh, yeah, they do a flashback. You see it. Um, it's really cool. Um, but anyway, it's really cool seeing him die. <laughs> so as all this is happening, 
Wanda from Earth 616, our Wanda, Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Olsen, Ron's demise, Ron's lover. um, (laughs) She shows up dream walking through the dark hold Mm -hmm. as herself. Now, just total side note, just to set it up, Wanda's whole goal in all this, she wants her kids. Mm -hmm. The ones she like created out of her right desperate or out of her uh despair and yeah, her pain depression and agony yeah. sean dove into that a little bit in the last one he said like that's the driving force in this movie yeah she is trying to find her kids so her kids don't exist but in, in other movie. universes they do exist right so she's trying to get america's power to go to other universes to have her kids mm-hmm. um and that's what she wants she just wants to be their mom mm-hmm. and that's why she went to the dark side like the anakin there's an anakin parallel there and kid just wants to save Padme. Right. And he falls. Wanda just wants her kids. But Wanda shows up in her Earth 838 Wanda. She's dream walking like a zombie. It's like very an avatar. Like an avatar. I don't think it's a coincidence that they released this movie at the same time as Moon Knight. Actually, they were supposed to release this movie way before WandaVision. Oh, really? Yeah, this movie got pushed back. Hmm. Which is crazy because when you think about the way Marvel ties their movies together, yeah, like how does that throw things off for them? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, because everything's connected. Everything has a meaning and a point, and every Easter egg matters. But anyway, back to Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is in front of the Illuminati. They're telling him, like, we don't know if we trust you. We're gonna. This council is gonna decide your fate um, because our Doctor Strange did not live up to right. what we expect right so as they're doing this wanda shows up to get america because america's there and dr strange is like listen this witch is powerful like you don't know what you're in for you have to let me help you have mm-hmm. to give me the book of vishanti so i can stop her um and they're like we got it we don't need you so they go there's a breach it's wanda she's there she's going for america and they're like sit still we're gonna handle this so, uh, Captain Carter, Black Bolt, Captain Marvel, and uh, Mr. Fantastic mm-hmm. walk up to the door where Wanda's walking in. And honestly, it's not exact, but I want to say this is Wanda's hallway. Mm. This is her hallway scene. Everybody needs a good hallway scene. And we talked about that in episode two, um, what a hallway is. But it's more of like a lobby scene. Yes. It wasn't as dramatic. You know, the lights didn't cut. The sound didn't stop. There was no... Dang calm before the storm it was just she zombie walked her way in and they're like what up girl like what do you want Mm -hmm. so the boys the stupid boys so dumb walk up and what's your name we're gonna stop you and then she just makes them look dumb Mm. black bolt goes to yell at her and she takes away his mouth so his sound waves don't leave his mouth and they stay within his head and it literally just blows up his head. Ooh. And it is like gruesome. It is like oh. dang. Lit, my mouth was open when I like when this all happened, I was like, "Oh my gosh, like Wanda going ape." Yeah. So then, stupid boy, leave it to another boy to handle it, you know. Mr. Fantastic walks up, smartest man in the whole world, and you don't even see any superpowers from him. He literally walks up to her and she just dismantles him. It's literally a parallel of uh, Thanos, the way he like unravels Mantis. Mm. It's the same thing. She like she unravels spaghettis him. her. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wanda spaghetti's Mister Fantastic. Yikes! And that's all you see of John Krasinski. So then, leave it to the powerful girls to take over and fight. Captain Carter and Captain Marvel step up to fight her, and they have a pretty good fight scene. And then Wanda just takes captain carter's shield and chucks it through captain carter's body Mm. and it's like it's so cool because she wanda literally kills all of them by their own hand right so black bolt died by screaming in his own head right mr fantastic she just unraveled and within his own stretchiness i guess Mm -hmm. captain carter she used her shield and then captain marvel's death was a little weird she kind of just threw captain marvel through a statue and the statue collapsed and killed her like fell on top of her and killed her it was kind of lame but yeah, especially with how powerful she is. Right. Um, but Wanda goes ape mode, and I think it, it was my favorite scene because it was like, where are they going with this movie? At that point, I was so into the movie. I was so excited for what was going to happen. Right. And then nothing went from there, mm. like that I wanted. 
So mm. I was a little upset from that point, but. Um, it's almost like if they dive into that earth and they give you all these sweet scenes on that earth, all you're thinking is like, where are they going to travel yeah, next? What, Who else are we going to see? Right. Who else is Wanda just going to destroy? Right. I was well, hoping for happen. no. I was hoping for more Earths, more pop, like superheroes to show right. up, but we never get that. And Professor X this whole time is sitting there talking to Strange, and he basically says like you know what, I trust you. You need to go protect America. You need to go protect her. Like, go. Mm -hmm. um, so then Professor X rolls up to Wanda while she's doing all this, and he gets in her head. And it's really cool, because from the X-Men movies, it's the same thing, how he can mind yeah. control, stuff like that, get in people's heads. He gets in her head. He sees that there's a trapped Wanda within her mind, mm -hmm. and he's trying to help her. And the whole time he's trying to help her, evil Wanda is goes into her own mind because she can go into minds mm -hmm. and she sneaks up behind professor x and snaps his neck oh my god in her mind so then you see professor x just like <laughs> <laughs> and then like fall over <laughs> and um dang dude it's it's sick <coughs> you're sick right now <laughs> people forget that wanda is like she like almost single-handedly stopped thanos in endgame like Thanos, they were clearly going to win that fight. Like, Thanos was overrunning everybody. And then Wanda walks up to him and gives him her famous spiel of, you just you took everything from me. She's like, I don't even know who you are. And then she, like, just, she could have dismembered him if she wanted to. But then he, you know, he calls for the ship to rain down all the, the missiles or whatever, and it, it stops that. But it's like, if it would have been Wanda versus Thanos 1v1, Wanda would have had no issue just wrecking him. So it makes sense that she rolled in and just wreaked havoc. Right. So I, I guess my question is, as someone who hasn't seen the movie, how does Strange protect himself from Wanda doing that to him throughout this whole thing? Is it because she knows him and like she doesn't want to kill him? Like, I don't want to do this to you, but I got to do what I want. I got to do. That's how it starts. And then she says, like, don't make me do what I need to do in mm. the beginning of the movie. And then he kind of says, like, do what you have to do. I will do what I must mm. Like, do what you have to. Gotcha. Um. There's a lot more in the movie that I honestly don't think is that important. I think it's kind of weird. Mm. The rest of the movie is really weird. The one idea I wanted to tap into is this idea that Marvel is so good about the long-term story. They're very good with the, the small bits and the details. Mm -hmm. For example, you've got in, uh, I want to say Age of Ultron, when they're all at the party and Thor puts his hammer down and he's like, yeah, who can lift it? Right. It's like that is setting up for a movie way in the future when Cap wields it. Right. Like that power. That, like that's one of my favorite mo like moments in any movie. Austin's number one movie going experience if you've seen the real. It absolutely insane. Yeah. I think Marvel's very good about they that. They play the long game beautifully. Yes. Where so, 10 movies from now, you're going to be like, oh, they right. made that reference in... <laughs> In that movie. <laughs> in uh, Madness Multiverse. <laughs> so going into this movie, I thought the Multiverse of Madness, this was the end. Like this was the long term that they've been building to mm -hmm. with like the idea of the Spider-Mans. And right. so I was expecting so much that I got lost in that train of thought. Yeah. But looking back, I want to say I think Marvel is like being genius about this. For example, I don't think it's a coincidence they were falling through universes and they turned into an animation for half a second. Mm -hmm. I think they're setting up this idea that in another world, there's a cartoon. Right. Boom. Miles Morales. Right. If you haven't seen Into the Spider-Verse, that that's a good movie. You need to yeah. watch that. They I confirmed think, it without confirming it almost. Right. I think rather than having a movie where like, okay, Spider-Man is going to we have to introduce a multiverse. Mm -hmm. We have to introduce like there's a cartoon. Then we have to introduce like it's like so many things you introduce in one movie that Marvel knows we're going to sprinkle that the sprinkle effect. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call it Marvel is very good at the sprinkle effect. Mm -hmm. These different concepts and ideas that will later go into a movie to make the movie that much better. Yeah. So I think them falling into an animated universe for half a second is setting up a miles morales in the future well speaking of spider-man so for me who hasn't seen the movie yet all i'm thinking about is the last time we saw strange he was messing with stuff he shouldn't have been in no way home or not no what is it far what's the no way home. no way home yeah 
So in No Way Home, he's doing stuff that like Wong is telling him like, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And then he does it. Is there any like after effects where like clearly Strange is dealing with stuff that he did in Spider-Man and he's got to reconcile that? Does that happen at all? Not that I remember. Because that's kind of disappointing. Because it's like he's doing a ton of stuff that he's told not to do or there's going to be consequences. And then they don't really play into that at all. Right. Um... Not much. Not that I remember, honestly. Dang. But yeah, look, back to the sprinkle effect. Mm-hmm. I think the idea of having Patrick Stewart show up as Professor X, that is a sprinkle into the X-Men. Right. That Patrick Stewart as Professor X exists in this universe. Right. So in another time, in another universe, right. they'll dissect that. They'll go into that. Same thing with John Krasinski, Mr. Fantastic. Well, I hope because con- they've confirmed they're making a Fantastic Four movie. I hope they use him, though, in this movie. I hope it's the same actor because if they used a different actress for Captain Marvel, are they going to use a different actor for Mr. Fantastic and have a whole new se- sequence where it's like John Krasinski only is involved in this universe because you, the fans, wanted to see it. So we're going to do this, you know, three minute bit in Doctor Strange with him, but then that's it. I hope not. I hope he's the guy. Right. And it, that idea of this was the opposite world where red means go instead of green. Right. Maybe that plays into the effect that these Illuminati superheroes got dissected so quick because it's an opposite world. So the smartest man in the room did the dumbest thing by walking up to Wanda and just dying. Mm. So it's like, that's the opposite. It, it's almost like we're going to get a sick John Krasinski, Mr. Fantastic. Or he'll be Mrs. Fantastic. Opposite world. He does mention in the movie he ha- his wife is very much alive with their kids hmm. because Wanda asks him, do you have a family or something? And he says, uh, yeah, a wife. And Well, then the question is, are they going to use Emily Blunt as Mrs. Fantastic? Because that's what the Probably. fan cast was. But I actually saw a rumor that Bryce Dallas Howard might be considered for Mrs. Fantastic, which she is heavily involved in Star Wars. She was one of the people Mando. I said I trust in Star Wars, where she's she's produced and filmed a lot of the uh, Mandalorian C, uh, episodes. She did one of the Boba Fett's episodes. Um, she was rumored approached for that role sweet yeah anyway i think back to (laughs) back to dr strange um that's where my interest got lost Mm. the rest of the movie i don't have much detail on because i kind of turned it off i was kind of like they didn't really do what i wanted but i'll just watch i guess um it gets really weird dr strange uh basically to beat wanda he ends up tapping into the dark hold Mm -hmm. rather than the vashanti the good book he taps into the bad book and you know says like he's he can balance it he can control it mm. and basically while he's in earth 838 or no they go to another universe at some point i don't really remember but probably shouldn't say that but <laughs> um he basically just dream walks back to his earth mm-hmm. and it's like oh who am i gonna dream walk into how about that really awkward scene in the very beginning when i buried my dead body mm. <laughs> So he dream walks into that dead guy uh, and he uses the dead Doctor Strange to fight Wanda. The ending is actually pretty good. Um, Wanda wins. Like she she wins. And then she has America. She's going to take her power. And America says, you know what? I can't beat you. So what America does is she just goes into a different universe with Wanda. And while Wanda's about to like do it, they're in the living room with Wanda's kids watching. Mm. She's like, is this what you want your kids to see you do? Ooh, so she like, move. yeah, <laughs> she turns it around on her. Yeah. And then Wanda just like loses it. Just like is crushed that her kids are like scared of her and like mm. don't want anything to do with her. And it's uh, the only way to defeat her. So basically Wanda destroys the Darkhold temple that had all the Darkhold secrets type of thing. Mm. She destroys it and it collapses on her. So mm. I don't, she might be dead. Probably not. Props She'll not. probably be back. But Nobody's dead in Marvel. She had a redemption, Wanda, mm. where everything she ever wanted didn't want her. Ooh. So all you Rons out there. Like when the Chipotle fight back. When the Chipotle fights back. <laughs> Everything you ever wanted didn't want you. Right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, the ending was really good. I just, I thought it was going somewhere else, and it didn't. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, that's kind of what I was thinking going into it. I was thinking, 
there's going to be massive fallout from Spider-Man and they're going to show so many universes with all these different characters. I mean, it's it's cool that they did the one and they did it uh, well enough where they gave you Professor X and gave you Mr. Fantastic and all that. But um, they had an opportunity to do so much more. But again, there's such geniuses at the long game. I'm sure that they've got a plan. I'm sure that something else, the next movies are going to all tie in. And at this point, I trust Kevin Feige. He's done so well with everything that this, yeah. this one didn't hit a home run like he wanted to, but that's because the next few probably will. My, my thing is, like, they set it up so good in phase one, two, three. Uh, yeah, I think this is phase four. Yeah, this is phase four. My thing about phase four is, like, they don't have the strong Cap, Hulk, Thor. Right. You know, they've got Hawkeye with the weird haircut. You know, they've got loki doing his thing they got it's like it's a weird band of characters in yeah. phase four that i thought dr strange was their he guy was the so this was the movie right and then it wasn't so it's right. like ah, what are you guys gonna do i don't know i have hopes but... i kind of understand that because phase four i have not like i haven't even seen dr strange yet phase four is now like once they got past endgame my desire and like feeling like I have to be there opening night is kind of fizzled and is gone. Mm -hmm. I still haven't seen a couple of the phase four movies and you're right. It like the big heavy hitters are no longer in the scene. So what are they going to do? And that kind of, I mean, that kind of leads me to moon Knight because moon Knight is now this show that's come out. He's a character that I knew existed, but I really didn't know anything about his origins. I didn't know anything about the character. I didn't really even know his powers very well. Um, but this show is sweet. It's hilarious because I asked you about it. And I was like, well, what's it like? I mean, oh, it's really good. Okay, so like, what's it about? Every time the answer is, I don't know, dude, it's weird. <laughs> and it is weird. It is a strange dynamic. But they they really play it out well in this first season of Moon Knight. So I binged it, and I've got thoughts. I want to break it down. The It's a six-part series, six episodes. Each one's probably about 45, 50 minutes long. And I'm really glad that they are because his character is so complex that they need five and a half, six hours of content to kind of go through it. Um, the first three episodes are kind of the setup. And the whole time you're just wondering what the heck is like going to happen. And like what the H.E. double is even going on in this guy's head. So you're introduced to this character, Steven, like happy go lucky guy. And he's got this thing where he'll he'll black out and then he wakes up somewhere and he doesn't know what happened and he doesn't know where he's at and you learn that there's this there's this other character there's this this split personality where when he looks in the mirror he sees another guy named mark and mark talks to him sometimes and mark eventually like takes over his body and they have this like dialogue of like steven's in danger he doesn't know what to do. And Mark is in the mirror saying, let me take over. I can help us. He's like, what are you talking about? So then Mark takes over. He helps them. He becomes the Moon Knight character. And you're thinking like, okay, so this guy is a superhero in secret. There's a split personality living within him. And whenever they're in trouble, like Mark will show up and kick butt. Um, And it's... It's just so complex, and the way they shoot it is so well done. And like you originally said, uh, what's his name? Oscar, Oscar Isaac, he does an amazing job in this movie because the switching he does between Sweet Steven and Mark is like is crazy. Yeah, especially like at the end of the show where yeah. he's, he's going back and forth between the two in the same scene. Right. He's talking to himself. It is so good the yeah. way he flips. Yep. And so you learn once you get to about episode three, you, you've got a pretty good grasp that Steven has a split personality with this guy, Mark. Mark struck a deal with an Egyptian god named Khonshu, who is the Egyptian god of the moon and the night sky. And Khonshu made him Moon Knight. So it's like Moon Knight is this superhero. He gets this, this armor that Khonshu gave him, and it protects him. It gives him super strength, superpowers, whatever. Um, but then you're introduced to this new character called Harrow, and he is trying to he's trying to resurrect this other Egyptian goddess. And this other Egyptian goddess is very similar to Khonshu because she what she does is she judges people. And those who are not worthy, those who don't have a, a heart that is balanced, they are basically killed immediately. 
So how she judges them is past, present, future, anything that they've done that's bad, if they're going to be an evil person, even 30, 40 years down the road, they're going to do something that's evil, they're immediately killed. Whereas Kanchu, he uses Moon Knight to be his like fist, to be his vengeance, they say quite a bit, which has a cool tie in with Batman. So their characters almost mirror each other a little bit, especially towards the end of the, the series. You kind of see how the Batman with Robert Pattinson ends is kind of similar to how Moon Knight ends, um, which I'll get into once we get towards episode six. But um, the first three episodes set things up really well, and Kanchu uses Moon Knight to punish those who have done bad. Whereas this other goddess, Ahmet, I think it was, yeah, Ahmet, she punishes people regardless of whether they did something bad or they're going to in the future. Like, so there's kind of this funny sequence where he's he's talking to, um, what's his name, Harrow. And he's like, so like, you're going to kill a baby? Like, what if the you judge a baby and the baby was going to do something? You just kill it? And he's like, I don't know. That's kind of like a... Uh, I feel like killing kids is kind of where I draw the line. And it's like this weird sequence of like all these Ahmet followers are listening to him like, well, uh, no, it's fine. You can trust your judgment. And so there's this kind of this battle where Harrow is, is he, he has intentions that are good because he wants to purify the world, but he's doing it in a way where it's almost like Thanos ask of like, people are going to die. And it is what it is where even though Kanchu's, gonna Kanchu does the same thing he does it to only those who have committed crimes and those who are deemed unworthy to live um but you you do have moments in the series where like who's the villain who's the good guy because moon knight does some stuff and Kanchu does some stuff where you're like i can't tell where this is going i can't tell who's who's leading the the good fight versus who's the bad guy but as the episode as the episodes go on once you get to four five and six um, that's when the really heavy hitting starts. So episode four, straight up, it was a scary episode. I don't like scary stuff. Like I might not see Doctor Strange because if you're if you're describing it as a horror film, I don't know if I even want to watch it. Like flat out, the episode four is called The Tomb, and they were in a tomb, and there's all these like Egyptian like demons after them. I straight up skipped three minutes of the episode because I didn't want to watch it. I don't like being scared like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a full grown man and I was scared. You literally don't need to apologize to me. <laughs> okay. So they literally at the end of episode four, and again, we're gonna get into some pretty, pretty deep spoilers here. Mark dies. And by episode four, you have a clear cut idea of like they are two people living in one body. They're clearly like a split personality disorder type of thing going on. Mark is Moon Knight. Well, no, at this point, they're no longer Moon Knight. Uh, for a brief second, because Kanchu gets entrapped by all the other Egyptian goddesses, which, again, you explain this to people, and it's a very weird, it's this weird series. It's a very strange concept, and I don't know anything about these Egyptian gods and goddesses or anything about that culture, really. So it's weird to dive into it, but at the same time, like, I understand, like, Marvel has all these different characters that originate from all these different nations, and you know, Thor is one of my all time favorites from the movies. But when they announced when they like dropped Thor was going to come out, I didn't know anything about the character. I didn't know anything about that mythology or the different worlds or anything. But you learn it. And then as you learn it, you realize like Thor is a baller. Like he's one of the best. He's top three in the in the whole, you know, MCU. strongest Avenger. <laughs> he's he's a baller. So I I as the episodes go on, you appreciate moon Knight even more and i'm interested to see where they go with it but mark dies at the end of episode four and that's when things really get weird because he wakes he dies he gets shot and he wakes up in this insane asylum and that's where the series turns to where you don't know what's real and what's not what reality is this character living is he actually insane and like everything that just happened in one two and three didn't actually happen and it's all in its head his head or is this like some kind of weird dream sequence? Is he dead? Is his imagination killed off? Like they really leave you hanging. They really leave you with like, I don't even understand where this is going. So then episode five, you find out he's in the afterlife, but before he can pass on to like all fields of roses, before he can pass on in this afterlife, his scales need to be balanced. And that was one of the heavy themes in the show of like, if your scales aren't balanced, if you're not a good person, you know, Ahmet's going to kill you. If your scales aren't balanced, you've done something in the past, 
Khonshu's going to send Moon Knight to take care of you. So before he can pass on in the afterlife, his scales need to be balanced. And they're not. They It's like there's so much chaos within Mark and Steve's head because there's two of them and it's so weird. He, they said you can't pass on because your scales aren't balanced. And the only way for them to balance their scales is to like basically be honest with each other. They said your hearts aren't complete. And there's things that you, Mark, are keeping from Stephen. And at this point, when he wakes up in the Saint Asylum, Mark and Stephen are split into two individual people. Um, so everything's in the show is playing out within his head and they're switching back and forth between Mark and Stephen. But in the Asane Asylum and in this death sequence in the afterlife, they are split. They're separated from each other. So they have this weird like back and forth type of thing where they, they end up going down like memory lane and they end up reliving memories. And that's when you get a full grasp of what is going on in the show because you learn that as a little boy, Mark had a little brother and in this dream sequence or in this memory sequence, he's maybe like 10 or 11 years old. He's got a little brother and he is responsible for his little brother's death. Flat out, this was heavy stuff. Like this was a really intense episode, partially because I have two little boys. So I didn't even, this whole sequence was like tough for me to watch, but Mark is responsible for his brother's death and his brother dies and his mom hates him for it completely resents him treats him like garbage because you killed your little brother you were supposed to protect him and you did it and she just treats him like crap so steven is kind of the one that's pushing this memory on and he's pushing this dream sequence on and he wants to learn like what happens next what happened next and his whole view of their mother was that she was the best she loved us i love mom she's amazing and then you finally get to the breaking point in the episode where you you see that Mark runs up to his room after being verbally abused by his mom. He's terrified. He locks the door. She comes up behind and she's pounding on the door. She wants to get in. She's going to punish him for for she's just going to release all of her, her anger out onto Mark as a little boy. And in that moment, that's when Mark creates Steven. You see this like his his eyes roll back and he creates Steven. And you, you realize Mark is the original and he created Steven out of st this, essentially the story of, um, there's like a movie that they play. It's Dr. Grant. Dr. Grant is like this Indiana Jones type guy. And as a boy, Mark was obsessed with watching it. And, uh, there's like a tag on the, he has the movie poster on his wall in his room and you can see it during this whole dream sequence. There's a Dr. Grant poster and it says where danger is near Dr. Grant is here or something like that. So Mark creates Steven in his time of feeling like in danger to cope with the stress, to cope with the trauma of feeling responsible for his brother's death. His mother hates him and treats him horribly. He creates Steven as a way to cope with it all. And that's when Steven realizes like, I'm not even the original. It's like this weird, like, I thought I was the original. I thought I was, you know, just my own person. Now I realize Mark is the real person. He created Steven out of trauma, and that's how this is all playing out. And they have this weird power struggle through the episode of like, give me control of the body. No, you give me control of the body. All right, you've done, you protected us, you took care of those guys, but now I need control back. And after this episode, they kind of like, their scales balance, and uh, they kind of then have this easy back and forth flow where they're shifting between Mark and Steven without like any struggle. And they're doing it effortlessly. They're doing it intentionally. When Steven needs to show up, he can do it. He's kind of like the naive one who sees everything as roses, whereas Mark is a little more toughened. And he's the guy that can be the real Moon Knight who utilizes all the powers and can defeat enemies. Uh, and you maybe even even seen some pictures where there's Moon Knight with the hood and the crescent and like he's all decked out. But then there's this separate Moon Knight that's just wearing a white suit. That's Steven as Moon Knight. So Steven as Moon Knight, he he's told to activate the suit, activate the suit. And he's like, what are you talking about? Activate the suit. So he activates a suit and he's just wearing a normal white suit. And he's just like a normal dude with a mask on. Whereas Mark is like the hardcore vigilante, um, you know, hero. So. They finally like they their scales balance in this this kind of moving scene where Steven 
tells Mark, like, it, it wasn't your fault. The fact that your little brother died, it wasn't your fault. You were just a kid. Like, it wasn't your fault. And that's when Mark, like, has this moment of realizing it. And it, it, he, it, it really isn't Stephen forgiving Mark. It's Mark forgiving himself. When Mark forgives himself, that's when his scales are balanced. And more stuff happens. We don't have to dig into every single detail, but he ends up coming back to life. And as he comes back to life, um, or just before that happens, Mark is fighting in this, in this afterlife sequence. He's fighting all these like sand people, demons, I guess you could call them. And the whole time, Steven is there watching him and he's like cheering him on. He's like, come on, Mark, you got it. Come on, Mark, you can do it. You've got it, Mark. And he, that's when he realizes like, wait a second, I am Mark. And if Mark has it, if Mark can defeat them, so can I. And that's like, that's the real tipping point in the episode where Mark and Steven start working in unison. It's no longer like I'm helpless and I need Mark to take over and I need Mark to fight the battles. Steven realizes like if Mark has the power to do it, so do I. So that's, that's when they become this cohesive unit instead of this split, you know, fighting each other. Um, and all of this is very strange. It is like a very heavy, very hard to grasp, especially in the beginning. But once you get to four, five, and six, you look back at episodes one, two, three, and it all makes so much more sense. Uh, the last episode has a ton of stuff happen where this Harrow guy, he ends up unleashing the goddess Ahmet, and Ahmet and Kanchu have this epic battle. And Harrow and Moon Knight have this epic battle. And this is where you see Moon Knight transitioning between Steven and Mark like effortlessly. And they're doing it in like every shot you turn and it's Mark. And then you turn again and it's Steven. And it's pretty cool to see them like not only working cohesively, but like all the different powers that they have. And now Steven has all this self-confidence because he knows if Mark can do it, I can do it too. So now he's fighting people instead of just being this helpless character. Um, all the while, their friend Layla, their, their wife, their wife, yeah, Mark's wife, um, which is all crazy. Mark has a wife this whole time. She has no idea that he has a split personality. Um, she ends up becoming the Avatar, which we were talking about that earlier. Uh, I don't even know if I mentioned this. So, Kanchu, the moon slash night sky god he uses mark as his avatar and so now there's this other goddess um called tawaret she's like she's a hippo essentially <laughs> straight up but she's like super friendly i like them big <laughs> i like them chunky Chunk. well you would like her she she's like a super friendly goddess whereas all the other ones are like very controlling like even the the dynamic between mark and Kanchu, it's like it's like a slavery type thing like you are enslaved to me you are in my service and there's nothing you can do layla becomes the avatar of this other hippo chick but the hippo chick is like super nice and she's like oh my gosh i've got this super sweet outfit i wanted you to wear i've been planning on my avatar wearing this cool outfit so Layla becomes this boss superhero who flies in she's got armored wings and she says like i don't want to be an avatar i don't want to do this because she almost becomes Kanchu's avatar for a hot second and when Tawaret tells her like i want you to be my avatar she says okay well temporarily i just want to be your temporary avatar so she comes in she's dressed she's decked out she saves the day. There's this cool sequence where a little girl sees her and says, are you an Egyptian superhero? And she says, yeah, I am. And it's something as Americans, like we've got Captain America, we've got Iron Man, we've got all these characters that are just like, that's our dude. And even like Thor, even though he's from Asgard, like he's like, we just view him as like, he's one of our guys. Mm -hmm. It. I think there's something powerful about this character kind of representing that nation and i saw like a quote on instagram of some girl uh some egyptian girl who's you know she's got like natural curly hair um she said like i've never seen a superhero with hair like mine and it's like little stuff like that that i never would have thought mattered mm -hmm. somebody out there can grasp a hold of that and cling to that character and i guarantee halloween in egypt every single person is going to be dressed up like layla you know, all the little girls are going to be dressed up like Layla, which I think is, you know, that's important. That is cool. Whether I, as a white guy in America, realize it or not, that representation matters. So I thought that was a pretty sweet scene. Um, but Mark, at the end of episode six, Mark is straight up about to get murked 
by Harrow. Like, Harrow has him dead. And Mark blacks out. And when Mark wakes up, everybody is dead. And he has Harrow right where he wants him. And then he asks Stephen, he's like, was that you, Stephen? And Stephen says, no, that wasn't me. And they sprinkled stuff like that in previously in other episodes. Sprinkle effect. Mm. Very good. Marvel. They don't mess around. They sprinkle it in, and you never really picked up on it before. Like, I always... There was another sequence in a previous episode where Mark's in danger, and he blacks out, and when he wakes up, everybody's dead around him. Because from the beginning, you think Steve is the innocent one. Mark is like the fist. He's the one that's going to take care of stuff. But you get introduced at the end of this episode that there's a third level, and there's for sure a third personality that is even more dark and even more like when they're in danger this third personality is the one that's going to show up yeah the and ultra violent virgin right which they they sprinkle a couple times right um in the insane asylum when he wakes up in the afterlife he finds steven in a room in a sarcophagus the sarcophagus is like shaking he opens it up and it's steven that that comes out um, so while like all this chaos is going on and they're trying to figure out this insane asylum, they pass by another room with another sarcophagus shaking and someone mm -hmm. yelling in it. Right. And they don't ever talk about it again. Right. So they, they sprinkle this idea that there's another version of Steven and Mark that right. is remain to be unseen. Yeah. And there's like three scenes in the show where he blacks out, wakes up, everyone's dead. And you're just like, Oh, that must've been Steven or that was, must've been Mark. Cause right. whatever. Um, and then there's that rooftop scene where at this point, Mark and Steven are like, they've had it with each other. They're fighting over the body who has control and they're fighting these two dudes and they black out and the two dudes are dead. And Mark is like, what the heck, Steven? And Steven's like, I didn't do that. Right. So the whole time it's like the, the focus is on Mark's and Mark, Mark and Steven's animosity toward each other mm -hmm. that it almost goes unseen that like these dudes just died and you don't know who did it right but they're just setting up this idea they do it like three times yeah and at the peak of the finale they black out and then they wake up and the villain is on the ground done right. and the villain had been destroying them the whole time right. and all of a sudden the villain's done and in the previous times that they did it i just assume maybe it was Kanchu. Like, because you see this Egyptian god is with them the whole time. Like, he's physically there. You see him. Um, and it's like, oh, maybe Kanchu did something. But then later on, you learn through, like, multiple dialogue pieces where the Egyptian god doesn't really have any power. The only power they have is through their avatar. So, in my mind, it was like, oh, Kanchu must have done something. But then you get to the end, and it's like, oh, no. There is for sure a third personality, and he is the Batman of the group where he just wrecks the people ultra violent. Version. And the, and the thing is like Mark and Steve, they have this back and forth and they are aware of each other. Whereas whenever this third personality takes over, you don't hear from him. You don't know who he is. Neither of them remember anything. Neither of them see what's going on. They kind of have like this feeling of like being a fly on the wall. Like when Mark is in control of the body, Steve is kind of a fly on the wall. Um, but when this third personality takes over like neither of them have any idea what's going on uh so then they the season ends essentially with mark and steven steven uh, apparently being free from conchu because like i said it was almost like a slavery dynamic of they didn't want to be under his control anymore so at the end it appears as though they are no longer in control right. you know they're on they're no longer under his uh control they they basically struck a deal with conchu <clears throat> basically right. Kanshu had been holding this idea that he needs an avatar and if it's not going to be Mark he's going to take Layla mm -hmm. and basically Mark is staying enslaved by Kanshu to protect Layla so that's like a common theme the whole time that Kanshu uses Layla against him to keep him in his grasp mm -hmm. um, so at the end when they defeat the enemy he tells Mark okay kill him kill the enemy mm -hmm. Kanshu tells Mark to end it and Mark has this moment where he's like, you know what? No. Like, you do it. If you yeah. want it done, Kanshu, you kill him. And he's like, now we're done. We made an agreement. We're done. Yeah. So free us. So Kanshu's like, all right. And right. that's how it ends. So you think like, okay, they're free. And then they kind of wake up and they're, they're like total 
cohesion, you know, between each other where they're switching back and forth and it's no longer a struggle and it's like they're free from Kanchu, but now they they know that each other exists. Uh, and it was kind of a cool scene at the very end, which is it's a callback to episode one. There's two goldfish in his fish tank, one with one fin, one with two perfectly healthy fins. And like I said, in episode one, there's there's kind of this thing with the goldfish. So it all comes together at the end and you see two goldfish in the tank. It's kind of a representation of the two personalities. They're together now. Uh, the one with only one fin is clearly Steven because he was the one that was created and that was Steven's fish in episode one. He's got a fish that's only got one fin. Uh, so you're like, okay, they're free from Kanchu. They're living together now with this split personality. And that's it. But then there's an end credit scene. I didn't even watch it. I didn't even watch the end credit scene. And David's like, well, did you see the end credit scene? It's like, how did I not know there was going to be an end credit scene? Every Marvel thing ever has an end credit <laughs> scene. So I'm like, well, I got to watch that right now. And in the end credit scene... Harrow, who was the enemy, he's still alive. He's in this weird asylum where, again, you're wondering, what is reality? Is this a dream sequence? Um, is this an afterlife sequence? I think, potentially, it could just be multiverse type of stuff. I don't think that it's an... Uh, I don't think it was a mistake on Marvel's part that they unleashed Doctor Strange at the same time as this. They've always got a plan because Mark switches between the asylum and the Moon Knight world, and the afterlife, and he's switching between all these, and you don't know what's happening. Um, but at the very end of episode six, he's talking with Harrow, who is a doctor, who his, it's his insane asylum doctor in this other dimension or this other world, and Harrow gets up and walks away, and as he walks away, he's got blood on the bottom of his shoes. And at that point, up until that point, I should say, you feel like this whole thing is, the whole Moon Knight thing is just a dream, or it's all just a weird, it's all in Mark's head. But Harrow, who's the enemy, who has just been defeated at this point, he gets up, and he walks away, and there's a blood trail, and he says, why am I bleeding? And it's like this moment of like, I think these worlds are tied together. This isn't just all in Mark's head. This is definitely happening, but how is it tied together? So... Who knows? Maybe they get Doctor Strange involved with Moon Knight. I mean, Moon Knight is going to get pulled into the fold. There's no doubt about it. Uh, they wouldn't cast Oscar Isaac as the guy if he was just going to be the TV show guy. Like, he's a major actor. And so the very ending has this end credit scene where Harrow gets taken out of the hospital by somebody and put into a limo. And inside the limo is Khonshu. And Khonshu wants Harrow dead, straight up. And Harrow kind of laughs at him and says, like, you know, oh, you're free. You know, what's his name? Mark is free. You know, you're a fool, yada, yada. And Kanchu says, no. Like, Mark has no idea how troubled he is and how he essentially still has control of him. Which then we immediately are introduced to the third personality, which was, I read Jake, Jake Lockley. Or, Lo yeah, Lockley. He Sorry. says, I'd like to introduce you to my friend Jake Lockley. Jake Lockley turns around. It's Mark as Jake, and he immediately shoots Harrow. So it's like this Jake character is, we thought Mark was the enforcer. We thought Mark was the fist of vengeance, but it's Jake. Jake for sure is the one that was doing all of this the whole time. And like all of this is just like, what the heck, dude? Like <laughs> You have a character that has a split personality disorder, and I love the way they introduce this whole series because you just are viewing this as Steven who is just the innocent one. He has no idea what's going on. He has no idea about Kanchu or Moon Knight or Mark. He's just like this guy. So then to get to episode six and see like, not only is Mark the original, you created Steven, but Mark doesn't even know that he has this side, Jake. It's like, I'm really interested to see where they go with this. Yeah. Um, they don't have, season two is not confirmed yet, but I think it, they're going to have a season two. They have to. Um, but yeah, I like how they introduced that because the end of Moonlight, the finale, is Mark and Steven saying, no, I'm not going to kill Harrow for you. Right. Like, free us. And Conchie's like, okay. And then in the after credit, Conchie's like, yeah, Mark thinks, yeah. but I've got Jake. Right. And Jake turns around and Jake doesn't even speak English. He speaks Spanish. <laughs> so it's really weird. But then Jake just pops Harrow twice. And it's like, oh, shoot. So if Steven's this innocent dude who works at a gift shop, Mark is this trained mercenary 
who kills, you know, Mm -hmm. and then Jake is just this like ultra violent, no morals, nothing. Right. It leads me to think if Steven, this is my theory. um, If Steven was created out of that uh, sorrow or that, uh, that fear that his mom was coming in the room Mm -hmm. um, to hurt him. If Steven was born out of that as a protector, Mm -hmm. Jake is the flip side where he's not the good version of like the, it's not like he's not the innocent side, right? He's the, the aggressive, the violent, aggressive side. Well, I was thinking is go ahead, which leads me to think there's a scene where Mark's mom dies Mm. and Mark won't even go into the funeral because he's so like, my theory is, does Jake kill the mom? Mm, Maybe. Does he turn into Jake and kill his mom? Maybe. And maybe once that dream sequence is dove into, that they'll actually realize Jake even exists. It's how I was thinking about it is Steven was created to protect him from emotional damage. But Jake's was created to save them from physical harm. Because anytime like they're in like a situation where it's like they're about to lose. They're yeah, they're about to lose, they're about to die, that's when Jake shows up. So either Steven and Jake were created at the same time and Mark only knew about Steven or something else happens in Mark's life where then Jake was created and he didn't even realize it. So I'm interested to see them dive into that and like, where does Jake come from? What's his origin? And yeah, maybe he's the one that takes out their mom. Yeah, I think I think there were some plot holes, too, though, in the show. Um, Like, I don't know if you can answer these questions, but my questions were like, there's a scene where Harrow pulls up to the uh, like the border patrol of all the military men Mm -hmm. and he just drops his staff and the judgment kills everything. How did that not kill Layla? You know what I mean? Because it well, she's a good person. What has Layla done? Does it judge peace people based off of what they've done, or does it judge people based off their following of that God? No, it's not the. Fo- I mean, it's it's based off of who they are as a person, what they've done, what okay. they're going to do. Um, because there's a scene like episode one, I think, where Harold judges some old lady, and she's saying he's got this like. He's he's got this relic that is tied to this goddess Ahmet, and it allows him the power to judge people through Ahmet's judgment. Like Ahmet is either going to deem you a good person or a bad person, and if you're a bad person, you're dead straight up. So he like grabs her hands and he judges her, and the scales say that she's not a good person. She says, "But I've been a, go- a good person my whole life. There's nothing I've ever done wrong." And he says, "Well, maybe something you're going to do in the future." And then she dies, and it's like, what the heck? So. I think it's it's more just like an overall it's not necessarily like their uh commitment to this goddess it's just who they are as a person. Sure. And then my other question is in the afterlife he had to balance his scales. Mm-hmm. And then like when him and Steven got real with each other that's when it balanced. Mm-hmm. How does that balance if there's a third personality? Yeah, that's a great question. Like seriously, how do I feel like that's they miss that. I feel like that's a plot hole. Yeah. How yeah, do you balance I, your scales when there's an ultra violent version of you? Right. <laughs> yeah. Which that's... then leads me to think Jake didn't kill his mom mm. cuz that scale would have been way off. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe because he was locked up, it was maybe because only Steven and Mark were there. Yeah, I don't Cause know. Cuz Jake was in the insane asylum in that sarcophagus. They For never sure. opened it. For sure. Yeah, I don't know. They're going to have to dig into that. That is that was my one question. That is a good question. Um, I think uh, my prediction for this next season was Layla says very clearly to the hippo chick, I'm going to be your temporary avatar, but I think she's going to like the power that she has. And I don't think she's going to feel, I think the the relationship between her and Tharawet, I think it was, I wrote it down because all these names, I didn't, Tawaret Tawaret, is the hippo goddess. I think the relationship that they're going to have is going to be much more friendly and they're going to like each other. It's not going to feel like you are keeping me enslaved. And I think she's going to stay the hero. I mean, there's a lot of times in, in these superhero storylines where like the main guy loses their power or whatever. And the secondary characters are given power. So 
Though I think in season two, it's going to start off with Layla is the main. Like she is the one that's that's doing everything. Um, any evil that arises, like Layla is going to take care of it. And I think Mark is going to be there to help her. But I'm interested to see eventually what's going to happen, in my opinion, projection per prediction is that Moon Knight is going to be the villain because Jake is going to take over. Jake was the one that killed Layla's father. Mmm, that would be a good twist. Maybe there was no other. Yeah, I didn't even dig into that, but the history is Mark had a partner that was working at this Egyptian dig site. He said it was his old commanding officer in the in the army, and they he said his partner got greedy and killed everybody at the Egyptian dig site to take this artifact, which I believe was the artifact that they used to find the goddess Ahmet. Again, there's so many layers to this show. Yeah. It's so difficult to talk about it for wrap it up in 20 minutes of conversation. Um you mean an hour and a half? <laughs> <laughs> we're going right now. Um Layla's dad gets killed. He is an archaeologist and he gets murdered at this this dig site. And everything we know is that Mark's partner went AWOL, went got greedy and killed everybody on the site. And Mark tried to stop it but he couldn't. Maybe there is no partner. Maybe that was Jake. We'll see that's kind of the origin of all of it he's at this dig site and it's obviously the dig site where the Kanchu god resides because mark is dying and that's when Kanchu says i will save you if you serve me i'll protect you if you serve me and he's in a position where he's either going to die or he's got to serve Kanchu, so he decides to save Kanchu. um but that's my project prediction is a bunch of stuff is going to be happening and there's going to be a mysterious villain who nobody knows and like but then you're going to realize it's Moon Knight and it's Jake and Mark doesn't realize that when he blacks out or when he's not awake, Jake is behind the scenes doing a bunch of devious stuff uh, for Kanchu. Because throughout this whole series, Kanchu is not like a character that you trust. He's not like clearly a good guy. And that's kind of what I was saying in the beginning where you meet Harrow and it's like, well, who's on the right side? Because Kanchu is doing some stuff and there's backstory where Kanchu is not somebody you trust. I think that Layla is going to be fighting Jake and they're going to have to, there's going to be this dance of, they don't know why they think it's a new Moon Knight character. Maybe, maybe uh Kanchu has a new avatar that is using as Moon Knight, but then you realize, no, it's still Mark, it's still Mark as Jake. The I words are coming out of my mouth and it's so, <laughs> it's, it's such a weird concept, It is, but it's, it's done so well. And I can't even fathom them making a movie about this and being able to explain this all so well. That's why in the beginning I said, like, they needed six hours to dive into this weird concept and this complex back and forth. And, yeah, the, the whole character's development is very interesting. I think that wraps up Moon Knight. Any, yeah. any you, other thoughts? I mean, closing thoughts, I... I really loved Oscar Isaac. I love the way he switched. Yeah. I think he deserves some sort of award for that. He did an like, amazing like job. Like actually he he really killed it. Yep. Um there's a part where Steven sacrifices himself for Mark mm -hmm. and Mark goes back for him and tells Steven, you know, you were my superpower. Like you are the only real superpower I have. Right. And it just reminded me of that Kanye song <laughs> where he's like I have bipolar. It ain't no disability. It's my superpower. <laughs> Maybe Kanye plays Moon Knight season two. Um, New Avatar. I love the look of Moon Knight. He's sweet. I think he looks sweeter than any superhero. I'm trying to remember the, the first... The hooded one. Not, yeah, not, not Steven. Not Steven's Mark's Moon Knight. He's pretty lame. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Mark's, Mark's Moon Knight is baller. I can't remember the first time I was introduced to his character. It must have been through a video game. Because he's not Super Smash Brothers. Is he in? Is he in there? Moon Knight's in it. Yeah. Is he really? Yeah. He's that. Right. I could be so off right now. <laughs> he's like the evil Kirby. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I don't know. Where he does the like spinning drill thing. Like I legit don't know. <laughs> I I've played like um. There's the mobile Marvel game. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know, kind of like a PvP type of thing. And I think he's in that. So I've always known he existed. And when they were like, oh, they're doing a Moon Knight series, it was like, oh, okay. Like, I know he exists, but I don't know a dang thing about his character or his backstory. So I, I, I mean, Marvel's at a place where they have to start introducing these, you know, almost tier two or three characters. But you know what? Like I said with Thor, I didn't know anything about Thor going into it. And he is like 
A1, tier one, one of the best characters in all of Marvel. I feel, I trust them to do the same thing with some of these other characters that worldwide aren't as recognized and are just a little bit newer. Um, all right, so that kind of closes things out on Moon Knight. That kind of wraps things up for this episode. We've been going for a dummy long time. Yeah, so like, subscribe. Let us know in the comments what you thought of Moon Knight mm. and what you thought of Doctor Strange. Give us some predictions for where all this is headed with Moon Knight. Do Maybe you, where all this is headed with Dr. Strange and Mr. Weird, as I call him. Mr. Wired. Let me know um, what you thought of Erica, Hannah Montana, America Chavez. <laughs> um, David hated her. I didn't, I didn't really <laughs> like her. I, I'm going to point out a couple of things that are happening in Nerdville. Uh, Lego recently partnered with Transformers. Uh, they announced it on an Instagram post that said it's Lego Optimus Prime Time, June 2022, which Optimus Prime Time was one of my fantasy football names. Did you win that year? I went undefeated and then lost in the championship. Brutal. But anyway, we don't have to talk about it. So Lego partners with Transformers. That should be sweet. I wonder if they'll do. Well, I don't know. It's going to be like a Bionicles type thing, I'm guessing they'll have a full-size Optimus that you can transform into the truck. That's what Legos are. You can transform whatever you want. <laughs> Dang it. You just take them apart and build something Shut up, else. man. <laughs> it's literally what Legos All right, are. Next topic. A uh, sequel to Jedi Fallen Order is going to be called Jedi Survivor. Oh. Confirmed. Okay. Sean Grunges in the background. Who knows where they're taking this? Didn't even know they were planning a sequel, but... It is confirmed, Jedi Survivor. Uh, report, Sony has filed for a new model of PlayStation 5 in Japan recently. What does that mean? Does that mean there's going to be a PS5 Pro? Is there going to be a PS5 Slim? You know what I want? I want a PS5 in stock yeah. and available. I was going to say, why don't they just, why don't they just have one? more of the one that they already have? And a little tidbit for... Obi-Wan, because we have to talk about Obi-Wan at least a little bit every single episode. Yeah, yeah. we'll have probably one more one podcast, more yeah. and then it's deep dive into Kenobi. Episode Kenobi 1, will, episode 2. Yeah, Kenobi will be live at that point. So episode uh, 6 will be probably all Obers Kenobers. Yeah. Um, Deborah Chow, who is the producer of the show, um, she's the, what would you call it? The jobber. The director. She's the director. She directs it. <laughs> Deborah Chow, uh, she was interviewed and she confirmed that we will see previous friends turned foe in Obi-Wan. One of the things me and David didn't mention when we talked about Obi-Wan, but both of us have thought multiple times is when are we going to see Commander Cody? Friend turned foe. There's no more friend turned foe than his commander clone that he worked alongside the entire Clone Wars. I mean, in 10 seconds, what do you think is going to happen with Cody? Cody's chip is running in his head he's obsessed with finishing the mission his greatest failure is also the biggest mission in the galaxy at that point to find obi-wan mm. and cody wants it he's going to be one of those bounty hunter one of those low lifes that's looking for obi-wan commander cody shows up obsessed with completing the mission mm. i'm excited Cody. All right. And that'll close out episode four. We went dummy long. Yeah, we did. Things got <laughs> stupid. It wasn't even about Star Wars either. And we went off. See, that's what the beauty of this podcast is. We will talk about Star Wars, but darn it, Moon Knight and Dr. Strange are worth diving into. And I think after seeing Moon Knight, it's like we gave you guys a season one recap. When they do eventually confirm season two, we will do an episode by episode rundown. And it won't be the full episode, but we'll we'll designate a good ten minutes to talk about what's going on in Moon Knight because they're 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 gonna do big things with that show. I can see it. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Like David said, comment, like, subscribe, do the jobber, become the thing, and then also like the job and the stuff, and follow all of it, the socials, become the friends. All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs>